Hello, I'm JW, and in this episode we're going to have a look at this white box, or more accurately what's inside, which uh, should be a socket outlet with RCD built in, or a GFCI if you uh, live in America or similar countries. Now, this item was purchased from a seller on eBay, and it's one of these where they've obviously uh, bought a load of stuff in and put it in a warehouse in Portsmouth or somewhere, as it was actually shipped from the UK. And uh, this was sold for the uh, inexplicably low price of £2.99, including delivery. So obviously I didn't make a great deal of money on that. And uh, here's a look at the item on eBay itself. It's still for sale. And inexplicably, the seller has actually reduced the price now to one ninety nine with free delivery. So pretty obviously they're basically just giving it away, or in fact almost paying people to take it away, as uh, the delivery itself is going to be more than the one ninety nine. But anyway, let's uh, have a look inside the box and see what we've got, and if it actually works, and how the thing is put together. Now the thing itself comes in this uh, plain white box, uh, fairly uh, unsurprising, as uh, that kind of money you wouldn't expect any kind of fancy packaging. And uh, these things are actually sold on eBay by a variety of people under different names, and the uh, normal sort of price uh, seems to be about £10. But for some reason this one was only one ninety nine or two ninety nine, depending on when you actually bought it. And uh, here it is, we've got this sort of plastic uh, bezel part here, and of course the uh, socket itself. So uh, let's just uh, take it out of this plastic bag and see what we've got. So there we go, just the uh, clip-on plastic front piece there, and the actual socket, and of course that will just fit over there and snap into place. Not entirely sure how you're supposed to remove it once you've done that, because uh, obviously the clips are on the inner edge here and you can't actually get to them once it's snapped on. But anyway, it also comes with these screws, and there's two of those obviously intended to attach it to the wall via the uh, holes here. And uh, these screws were described in the uh, listing as uh, four millimeter metric size, which uh, is a straightaway problem for the UK because uh, standard boxes for socket outlets and switches have uh, M3.5 threaded holes, and of course these being M4 obviously will not fit. So a uh, possible issue there, though they may well fit in other countries. Now here's the front of the device, and uh, it's got the uh, sort of multiple uh, holes there for all kinds of different types of plugs. Unfortunately, this is not uh, really compliant for the UK because uh, obviously you've got really very little in the way of shutters here, though it does appear to have some kind of uh, shuttering outlet there, but uh, certainly it's one of those weird things where sort of any plug will fit into it and uh, not necessarily particularly well. And uh, we've got the two buttons here, the sort of reset just to uh, switch the thing on and the test button, which obviously could cause it to trip when you press that. 230 volts and uh, 10 amps, uh, which presumably is its uh, maximum rating. Again, that's not ideal because uh, certainly in the UK, a 13 amp plug would fit in there, no problem. And um, the tripping current here managed to uh, 10 milliamps, which is uh, certainly lower than uh, normally. It would generally be a 30 for most of the ones in the UK, but uh, say 10 are available, just somewhat less common. Uh, test before use. And I've also got this other here, which says uh, another current rating of 500 amps. Uh, not entirely clear what that uh, would actually mean or refer to, but. Uh, Anyway, we'll uh, see if we can find out about that a bit later. And other things here, 230 volts obviously for the uh, voltage, and it's an AC uh, type uh, RCD with the uh, small symbol in the box there. Now uh, the thickness of this is quite considerable, as you can see there, and this raises another problem because uh, in the UK uh, wall boxes for sockets are generally about 25 millimeters or one inch in depth, and pretty obviously this is uh, way, way over that. Uh, as you see there, it's uh, what uh, approximately uh, what sort of 38 uh, millimeters or so, or about uh, an inch and a half. So uh, this will not fit into the uh, vast majority of uh, wall boxes in the UK. So in terms of just buying this and uh, swapping it for the existing socket, uh, think again. You can get uh, deeper boxes. Uh, say 25 millimeters is the uh, more usual one. 35 is the next one up, but obviously that's going to be too small as well. And the uh, largest, deepest size is 47, which uh, this would fit into, but uh, the fitting of those would be extremely uncommon, and uh, you're not likely to have one of those behind your standard outlet. Now the back of the device, uh, basically just a bit of text here, product uh, GSII, or ground fault uh, circuit interrupter, model number and the voltage again, and this sort of uh, brand name, which is Flower Rion, I don't know if they've deliberately spelt that uh, 
as flower, or it should have been Florian, but anyway. And we've got these rather unhelpful uh, cautions. Don't take off unprofessionally. Keep away from water. Well, fair enough. And uh, the GFCI does not guard against electric shock resulting from with both circuit conductors. Well, uh, presumably that means if you touch line in neutral, it's not going to work. But then that's the same with uh, these devices. And a little thing there suggesting the uh, length of wire to uh, strip before installing in those terminals. Now the thing itself doesn't appear to be horrendously made, and let's just have a look at the bottom there. We can see the actual terminals inside. They do appear to have uh, at least some uh, metal inside there. And you've just got the uh, screw on the top, which is uh, quite interesting as you've got two holes for uh, one, but it seems to be just one of these sort of cage type or uh, things where the uh, screw just loosens the bar there, and then the wires will go over the top of it, oh, yes, there we go, and then of course it uh, just clamps them down against the other piece of metal inside. And uh, a bit difficult to see there, but we've got the markings for line, earth and neutral connections on the back there. Now the front plate uh, is metal, which is something, this is plastic here, and this back part uh, is uh, just a plastic box which seems to clip on the uh, side tabs there and over there. Not entirely clear what this uh, plastic stud here is, but uh, we'll have a look at that when we open it up in a moment. Now I've just uh, put a bit of flex in the back here with the uh, three wires there, neutral, uh, earth and uh, line there. And uh, the other end here just uh, again bared the wires there to attach to a suitable power supply. And uh, before we just power this up, I thought we'd just check that uh, at least the earth is connected through. So just uh, connect to the uh, earth there and just see if it's connected in here, which it appears to be. So uh, at least that's a start. So uh, we'll just connect this to the power supply, which is a uh, shot here. Now I'll just switch on the power there and uh, the device uh, obviously didn't do anything, but uh, presumably have to press the uh, reset button. And indeed the little red LED has illuminated there, so uh, power is obviously uh, available to the device. And uh, for testing, we'll just use this uh, lead here connected to this uh, testing device, and uh, we shall see uh, what if anything happens. Now, so it is actually just about going to uh, fit that. So a potential issue here is that the uh, extremely small clearance, the uh, plug does just fit below the uh, test buttons there but only just, we're talking sort of one or millimetre or so clearance there and slightly more on the, the blue button, but certainly not a lot. Now for the testing, I can use this uh, device here and uh, this has a variety of settings on it, uh, most of which I'm not going to be using in this case, but uh, the uh, first thing to check is the current at which this thing actually does trip at. In this case it uh, should be 10 milliamps or slightly less, certainly not more than 10. And uh, for this we'll just use the uh, setting over here, the sort of RCD trip as said, or I delta N, which uh, obviously corresponds to the uh, markings on there. And uh, we've got at the top here the uh, 10 milliamp uh, option, the uh, setting here for AC, which again is actually marked on the device. And at the bottom here there's two choices, which is 0 and 180 degrees, and that just refers to which part of the AC waveform the tripping is actually going to be occurring on. So obviously we should really test both of those. So we'll start at the uh, zero degree one there, and ideally we should be looking for a trip current of uh, 10 milliamps or less in the case of this uh, 10 milliamp device. So let's see what it is. Okay, well that's come up as eight, so that's perfectly fine. That's just slightly less than the 10, of course. And we'll uh, do the same again on the 180. And that's eight as well. So in terms of that, that's uh, perfectly fine. That will be a successful test. Now, a second test is the time in which this takes to actually trip, which again, obviously, uh, you can't check by just poking the button. And again, we've got the 10 milliamps here, and it's the same with the 0 and 180 degree uh, point in the waveform, AC, of course, there. And in this case, we've got three possible choices. We've got half, which will apply a current of 5 milliamps, so the device should not trip in that instance. Uh, times 1, which is the full 10 milliamps, so the device certainly should trip there, and the times 5, again, it certainly should trip on that one. So we'll start out on the half, 
and we should not see a trip there. And we don't. Do the same on the 180. We don't. The 2000 there is just the time. It's basically greater than uh, 2000 milliseconds or greater than 2 seconds. Now it should trip on the uh, times 1 option. So again we'll try the 0 first. So 13.1 milliseconds. That's fine. And on the 180 it's 4.7. Notice there's quite a difference there. Mainly because of the uh, say different point in the waveform where the tripping actually occurs. So now let's just try on the times 5 which will apply going to 50 milliamps. So 17.4 milliseconds, Again, that's fine. And on the 180, 2.3. So uh, yes again that's fine. So in that regards the device certainly does seem to work correctly and uh, no problems with that. I'll just do a quick check on the uh, voltage, uh, so we confirm the uh, polarity of the connections there. So uh, that's actually between line and earth, which obviously would expect to have the full mains voltage uh, to 60 here, as they were not directly on the mains here. This is a uh, alternative uh, supply. And again, we should get the same between the, uh, just rearrange the leads here. This is actually between line and neutral, which again should be the same sort of voltage. So there, 261. That's again fine. And between uh, Earth and neutral really should be pretty much zero. Yeah, again, that's fine, or well, not point one, but uh, basically as close to zero as you're going to get. So, in terms of uh, operation, that certainly seems to work. So, uh, now let's have a look inside, see how the thing is constructed. Now, obviously, we've just removed all of the wiring and uh, disconnected everything, so uh, we don't want to be opening it with uh, power connected. So, uh, let's see if we can get inside. Now, it appears to be just these tabs on the side here, which hold certainly the Front plate in position. Right, well, there we go, that's just a uh, pressed out piece of probably steel and also got some sort of grey coating on it. And I did actually uh, just remove a bit of the paint on the top edge there just to check if there was any continuity between this and any of the uh, terminals, but no, there isn't. And as you can see, it just slips over the plastic moulding that is the thing itself. Now I've got a label there which uh, doesn't actually say a great deal. Difficult to get the uh, angle there, but uh, most of it's not in English. Uh, Nandeo is the only uh, English word there. There's some other words obviously in uh, Chinese or whatever. Now I'll tell you, the front here does have some kind of shutter arrangement, so not actually as bad as some. There's nothing on the earth hole obviously, but uh, there are some black plastic shutters there and uh, Yeah, they do appear to require that both are pressed in in order to open it. Just pressing one does not open it. Let's just check with the uh, top ones. Well, yeah, you can pull it down with just the one, but uh, it's certainly a lot better than uh, some others we've seen on other devices, so that's not too bad. Now, presumably these plastic snap tabs were just pressed down. Yes, that's actually rather easy. Now, it's just a question of poking those and then seeing what we've got. Right. So there's the uh, shutter mechanism. I'd say it's not uh, the most wonderful uh, thing ever, but it's certainly far superior to uh, things we've seen on uh, similar devices. So we've got a couple of springs there. Let's place that back in the... Uh, place. So yeah, it's just a sliding uh, shutter arrangement. And uh, in theory you can probably just get a screw down there and poke it open with one, but uh, the angle of it does seem to suggest it would need uh, at least both of them as it does sort of go at a strange angle otherwise. But it's reasonable, especially considering that this is designed on the front to take a two-pin uh, thing here with the uh, odd sort of shape there, so the uh, UK method of just having a thing in here, pressing it and it opens those obviously wouldn't work anyway, so again that's not too bad. And just got the little light pipe there for the uh, LED to come through to the front panel. Now here's the internals of the device. Uh, the contacts do look to be reasonably substantial and uh, they're copper or brassy type coloured, so that's uh, certainly better than uh, those awful uh, shiny steel ones there, and so they have got a reasonable amount of contact uh, 
pressure on them, so uh, that's certainly something. Uh, this yellow button is the sort of test button, which uh, is just a rod which goes down to a little switch on the circuit board there, so that's fine. That's how it just slots in there. And the blue one has that rather large spring, so obviously, this is a mechanical uh, latching uh, deal, which obviously uh, resets the trip mechanism. And got the uh, this is a three pin uh, socket at the bottom here. We've got this sort of twin type of contact here for the earth, obviously, uh, depending on what type of plug you're putting in. And that's the uh, line of neutral holes at the bottom. Again, they do seem to be of reasonable thickness. It's certainly uh, not going to go totally out of shape within five seconds. And again, the top one's uh, pretty much the same. Again, it's just a, just a link through under there on the copper to the uh, top terminal. Now, let's just have a look on the back here because uh, there doesn't seem to be any way of. Oh, yes, there we go. There's some. Little indents there, which is rather interesting. And notice it's got the uh, Chinese writing on the back there. It's got the same uh, model number, but obviously they've stuck this over for the English wording. Presumably that is the equivalent in uh, Chinese or whatever language that uh, that actually is. Now we've got an indent here, which doesn't seem to do a great deal unless uh, we. Can Oh, yes, there's a plug there, and then we've got this larger plug just here. Now, this hole in the rear casing is a bit uh, odd. That's one that had that little uh, plastic plug in it underneath the label, and there's another sort of plug there, which uh, again covers up a hole there, but it uh, doesn't seem to have any purpose in this particular case because that simply would line up with somewhere here, sort of where that wire is, so it doesn't really do uh, anything in that regard, and that hole is uh, nothing to do with it, because you see it's just a hole, it doesn't go anywhere. And the other one there actually lines up with the back of that, so uh, possibly to uh, just provide a mechanical stop point for it to uh, press into or something, but uh, anyway there's no uh, real functionality for that. Now we've got the uh, line here and the neutral coming in here, neutral being blue and line being red for some uh, odd reason, and see they're labelled. And these come down onto these copper, or they look, they look like copper strips here and here. And this is the actual switch here, so just a double pole uh, switch there. This is in the uh, closed position, but obviously when it's open the uh, contacts would open there, like so. And those two were uh, just simply onto those little points there, and again they do at least be, well they're copper plated at the very least, if not uh, solid copper, and that comes through onto the back here, and correspondingly here, and again we've got the wires then come from the two pads through this uh, sensing coil, and then the neutral goes down there, which will connect onto this uh, strip here for the two terminals there and there, and then the line comes across, and again we're just connecting there to the strip for the terminals on this side. Now I just have to remove that uh, wire from that side there, which is the uh, blue uh, sense wire there, which was, was holding it in place. And the other thing that was holding it was the uh, reset button, which obviously came through here, through the hole there, and obviously went through the corresponding hole in the black top piece. But anyway, that just uh, clips out of place. So uh, this black piece is just a single piece of moulded plastic. And we've got the uh, earth contact uh, here, which, uh, as you see there, just goes under this sort of insulating uh, a sticky pad, which pops off there, and then it goes straight up into the uh, contact on the other side. So nothing particularly unusual in there. Uh, so that's just an insulating pad to shield it from the back of the printed circuit board. And the other two ones there. So we've just got the uh, single piece of metal on that side connected to the line there, and then the same on that side with the blue neutral going down in there. Now uh, these do look to be uh, reasonable quality actually, they certainly appear to be, uh, if not copper, they're certainly uh, copper plated and they're actually decently substantial size, so uh, reasonable uh, attempt there at making them uh, reasonable sort of contact. And uh, what we've got here, the two wires come across and obviously through the uh, sense coil here, and again we've got those wires just coming off there, the blue uh, which goes over to the other side there. 
Oh right, I see. Yeah. So the blue is actually just a reference for the. Uh, that's actually connected directly to the neutral there, and the actual wires of the coil are these two red wires here. That blue is obviously just providing the uh, neutral to the circuit board to obviously provide any power that it will need to actually operate. And so the two uh, others come across on there. Now the circuit board doesn't have a great deal on this side, uh, so we've just got this single uh, component here, which is a uh, MOV probably, and uh, just got the reading on that, it's a bit uh, small to see there, but uh, TVR 10471, and let's just see where that's connected. So we've got one here and one here, so one is obviously directly to the line there, and the other one, uh, yeah, just go straight down to that uh, neutral. So it's connected directly across the main supply, so it's obviously going to be a uh, oxide where it's still more or some kind of surge suppressing type of device. Uh, nothing else on the back at all other than this uh, trip coil which obviously is the thing that uh, is power then we'll just operate that little pin to release the sprung contacts. Now this side we've got the little uh, switch there which is for the uh, testing purposes. Uh, got the uh, line of neutral there, which comes in via the uh, what's going out to the two contacts, and uh, not a great deal else. Little LED there, which is just to indicate that the power is turned on. Um, presumably a diode, uh, a few resistors here, and just over this side, uh, capacitor there, and uh, that's it. Uh, those are the wires from the uh, sense coil, and all of the operation is to be in this single uh, eight-pin device. I'll try and get a view of what that actually is. Now here's that circuit board in a bit more detail, and this is the top half, and I see that's that D3, it's just a diode with the M7 printed on there, and so we've got that resistor R5, and that little tiny LED, which is a red one, which just comes up to the front panel via that uh, little light pipe there. And the little red thing here is the uh, reset switch, which or the uh, test button, which just checks if the device will trip. And then uh, further down here we've got the uh, Obviously that's the neutral there, the uh, line connection is at the top there, not actually connected on this side. So that three pin deal there is uh, marked 100-8 and the eight pin device. So uh, 0413 which is really the uh, date of manufacture, so that'll be April uh, 2013. And the other number is CL4140. Now I've had a quick look, uh, but I can't find anything obvious that that uh, chip would actually be, as uh, that number doesn't really come up with anything uh, remotely resembling that. It comes up with plenty of other stuff, but it's clearly totally unrelated to this particular device. So not entirely clear what this device is, but uh, obviously it's going to be some sort of uh, comparator or amplifier type of thing. And uh, the uh, Comparative coil here, obviously when there's an imbalance in the current on the two large wires, you'll get a voltage on these two red wires here. When that exceeds a predefined level, it will then switch on this little output transistor here, which will then connect obviously to the coil, which is between here and that one. And of course that will trip the device. And when the test button here is pressed, it just connects to the neutral wire, which connects on that point where it says marked with J1 and that creates a small current imbalance uh, which of course will also trip the device uh, and test that the electronics and things are actually working correctly. So that's what's inside a fairly typical RCD. Uh, this particular one of course was uh, implausibly cheap but uh, anyway the internals seem to be made to a reasonably high standard so uh, you can certainly use that uh, if you wanted. I said the only issues are really the substantial depth of the device and the fact that those screws supplied are M4 rather than M3.5, but uh, nevertheless uh, not a uh, total pile of junk as uh, quite a lot of stuff is. It uh, actually is made uh, reasonably well and does work, so uh, there you go. And uh, I've done a previous video on how RCDs actually work, so I'll put a link to that in the description section, and uh, you'll see that does sort of tie up with uh, the contents of what was inside this particular device. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.